It's been revealed that men are being asked if they are pregnant before undergoing scans in NHS trusts in England. Male cancer patients and those having x-rays and MRIs are being asked if they could be expecting. This is after the government removed the word female from the law governing medical procedures and placed it with individuals. The Walton Centre NHS Foundation Trust in Liverpool now says all patients under the age of 60, regardless of how you may identify your gender, it comes amid anger at the NHS for prioritising gender over sex in order to be inclusive of trans people, including on single-sex wards. Let's get some discussion going on this. Felix Fern is co-founder of the grassroots activism team Trans Activism UK. And Kate Barber from Sex Not Gender Midwives are with us. Afternoon to you both. Uh, Felix, give us your response then to the overarching headline of this one. Somebody, I had an x-ray last night, strangely enough. Nobody did ask me, but uh, they could have done. Are you pregnant? It's a crazy question, right? Well, something I think that people need to be aware of and make clear is this isn't new. Um, it doesn't happen to everyone, but men have been asked this question literally for decades. It's been standard procedure for many years before any MRI or scans be asked if you might be pregnant. It's not a new thing. Yeah, interestingly, one of our uh, producers was just telling us that he had the booster jab a couple of weeks ago and he was asked uh, before that if he's pregnant. Yeah, pretty much everyone who's been vaccinated has had it. Um, well, why, why would, you, but why would you ask a bloke if he's pregnant? Because he clearly can't be pregnant. You don't know what reproductive organ someone has. Well, he's a bloke, a so... How do you know someone's a bloke? Well, his name's Harry, and he's a bloke, <laughs> so... A there have been, male. like... There have been women who have been kicked out of women's toilets because they look like men or they look mannish. So if someone like that goes into a toilet and someone says, well, actually, you're very butch and I think you're a man and you should be here. Okay. And then they have a medical emergency and they inform the doctors that's a man. That could have serious repercussions. You unfortunately don't always know right. what someone has inside them. OK, Kat, uh, response to that, if you would. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. My take on this is we do ask people a variety of questions, but it's important to ask the questions that are medically relevant. So, no, I don't ask men irrelevant questions to their sex, but the important thing to take into account here is that the NHS records someone's gender. We don't record their sex. If we did record their sex, then no, we wouldn't have to ask men if they were pregnant because people that are biologically male can't be pregnant. That's why it's really important that the differentiate clearly between this in healthcare, between sex and gender. I agree absolutely. We can't assume someone's sex based on their presentation, which is why this amendment has been brought in, that we don't just assume that people are male or female, because things are very different now in particular to how they were. But this is all even more reason to record sex and not gender and to only ask clinically relevant questions. Is that fair, Felix? Um, I have kind of two sides on that, one of which is you don't always access someone's medical records. There are circumstances where it's a lot quicker and more cost effective for a medical professional to have a list of check boxes and just say, are you this quickly? No access to their medical records, takes seconds over and done with, doesn't hurt anyone, and they add the information that they need straight away. The other thing is, yes, medical records do record gender and not sex, and trans people can have that changed. Personally, as someone um, who is transgender, and my record has said I'm male for, uh, since I was 18, I'm now 33, I would like it to reflect both things. So I think it's fine for it to reflect whatever gender. I would also like it to reflect that I'm chan trans because I don't, for example, get invited for smear tests, which is important. So I think medical records need to be improved so that we have everyone's medical information. I mean, in terms of the, the, the arguments around this seem to, as you will be aware, Felix, seem, seem to largely be based on the eradication of primarily women, but also men as well. Um, I mean, the, the, this is fairly uh, interesting territory, isn't it? I mean, we don't want to eradicate men and women. And, you know, women get pregnant, men don't get pregnant. That's a fact, right? Well, no, because if someone looks at me, they typically see a man, a man who likes pink a lot. But my, my name is Felix. I use he, him pronouns. People don't look at me and think that's a woman. I still have the reproductive organs that could allow me to get pregnant if I wanted to be. Right, but you would be so rare statistically, and, and I would say this respectfully, um, I also like pink, by the way, uh, but that, that it would surely not in any, uh, you know, it wouldn't be offensive to you if you were categorised as a, a trans man, would it? It wouldn't necessarily be offensive, but regardless of my rarity, I'd still like to be included and not feel like my rec medical records or how I'm treated by medical professionals is at risk because of my okay. rarity. 
I mean, Kat, as a, from a midwife perspective, then, is, is this... Is this really causing problems? I'm sure there's a hell of a lot of paperwork going round talking about being um, dutiful and respectful to people's wishes and there's lots of courses people have been sent on. What's happening at the coalface, to coin a phrase? Is, is, is this becoming a problem for anybody? Yes, it is. Um, I'm actually a nurse, just to clarify, and yes, it is causing an issue. Um, for trans people and for people that are men and women who okay. don't have gender incongruence, which is why I agree absolutely with Felix. We sure. do, we should have gender and sex markers to ensure good parity of care for trans people. And what was people happening before, them. though, Kat? I mean, before this, I mean, this discussion, and, you know, if people are treated nicer or more respectful out of something, only a fool would think that was a terrible thing to introduce. If we want to introduce legislation that's going to make people nicer, then that's a great thing. I think we could all probably agree on that. But I don't agree with that. Actually. You don't. I think that no. I think you that don't want to be nice to people. I think that a really key debate in this is that niceness is enough, and actually we need to be nice. Of course, yeah. my profession is that I am a kind person, but kindness shouldn't eradicate material re reality it shouldn't then eradicate that sex exists and that's a big thing in this debate that gender matters to some people yes absolutely and we should be respectful of that but sex matters as well no no i wasn't suggesting it doesn't and, and felix would you would you acknowledge that though even as a trans man that sex does matter yeah, something I would actually. I mean, make you want a point to be known of. as a man, right? I mean, so I, I do. In many respects, these, yeah. you could be the chief advocator of this argument. I mean, from my point of view, some of these arguments around sex matters also harm women because when we're talking about the pregnancy question in medical circumstances, a lot of cis women get asked if they might be pregnant. That includes people who don't have sex with men, lesbians, menopausal women, infertile women, some of which hey, may have far more trauma around the question of being asked if they're pregnant than I do as a trans man. I don't find it traumatic and they might. If medical records were more accurate to all of us, then cis women would be far more protected right. and not necessarily be asked that question again and again and again. See, some women even object to that, cis women. They, they would say, I'm just a woman. I, I don't need an additional title to identify my, uh, my, my gender or my sex. I personally use the term to differentiate between trans or not trans rather than saying, for example, trans right. or normal, but women are entitled okay. to whatever makes them comfortable. Kat, just give us an idea. You said that this is causing issues, literally on, on, the, on the floor, as it were, uh, the workplace. How is, why was it not causing issues before and why is it now then? I think because the nature of society is changing, gender identity has seen people choose to eschew sex stereotypes, has seen people choose to identify as something that's incongruent with their sex. So when the nature of society changes, we should then reflect as health professionals, look at our practice and say, is this still relevant to the population we serve? Now, the NHS hasn't done that. It still chooses to use gender as a marker of sex. So, in my opinion, rather than just using blanket questions that treat everybody as though they may have a gender incongruence, we need to really look a little bit more carefully with some more respect and to say, yes, this is causing a problem. It's causing a problem because more people are trans, more people are non-binary, et cetera. But for some women, they still identify as women. They are women. They don't have a gender identity. So I think it's about seeing a complex problem and not seeing a, mm. com a simple it, I mean, it is complex, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Felix, I think one of the areas that that confuses people is, is why isn't the onus on the mi minority that this applies to? I mean, the vast majority of people wouldn't be affected by keeping things as they were. The amount of trans men who retain their reproductive organs and go on to have a baby would be so... I would suggest, so and you stand to be corrected, so small that it would seem curious that we'll be eradicating the status quo or convention or tradition in order to accommodate a very tiny amount of people, even if you want to be kind to those people. I would personally argue that the actual minority that we're trying to cater to in this argument is transphobic people, not trans people. Because like I've mentioned, this question has been asked for decades. The vast majority of men hear it, just say, no, that's it. It takes them two seconds to say no. Suddenly out of nowhere, some men are upset by it. Personally, I think it's very silly to cater to a couple of loud, angry men who are trying to speak over everyone else. It's inclusive to use things that cater to everyone, not listen to a few angry men. Kat, final point on this? Yeah, I'd like to pick apart that a little bit. So, for example, I'm working in A&E, 
it's two o'clock in the morning and I have a man who is psychotic. He is biologically male, his gender identity is male, there is no reason to ask him if he is pregnant. However, he is still asked, he's not transphobic, he's just someone with psychosis and then he is asked if he is pregnant. How do you think that man's going to react? This isn't about catering to a small vocal transphobic population it's about hearing the concerns of women it's about I, acknowledging that there are vulnerable communities that this actually may disproportionately impact and we need to be sensible about how we look at that stop applying blanket policies and start looking at impact assessments okay cat thank you cat barber from sex not gender midwives and the other voice you heard there was felix fern co-founder of the grassroots activism team trans activism uk over to you on that one as well oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand i don't i honestly don't think that anybody wants to deliver or shouldn't want to be deliberately unkind um, I feel incredibly strongly, mo actually not about, uh, m more about the, the woman side of this debate. Uh, the rights of women to retain what a woman is, the word woman to remain when talking about pregnancy. Uh, the history of the woman's journey, the giver of life, if you want to go that far. All of that, I just happen to think is really important in the spectrum of this thing called life and our existence. I don't want to drop the word woman from any of that kind of stuff. I don't want that to be the case. Simultaneously, I don't want to be... Why would I want to be horrible to a trans woman? Why would I want to do... Why would I want to set out to be unkind to trans people? Because somebody has made a decision because of their own disposition, their own gender um, identity requirements and needs, uh, crucial and very real as they are. Um, I wouldn't want to be unkind to that person either. But I think it would be a massive leap of our anthropological journey, our intellectual journey, if I were to say, well, in order to appease that group or to be kind to that group and inclusive to that group, what I've also got to do is to take the vast majority, 99% of the world, and say, right, we're going to change our language and lose the word woman in order to appease that group. I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's right. I don't think it makes any sense. And that's without getting into, you know, the backstory of women. And it would apply to men, but I genuinely think there is actually a slightly more nuanced and important, really important, issue around that of women. I also don't think the idea that every trans person is going to suddenly pitch up in female changing rooms and start, you know, behaving inappropriately. I, I don't even think that's a, a thing. I mean, there might be a case of that. Generally speaking, I don't think it is. But I also don't want to live in a world where a man is arrested for rape and then turns up at the police station and says, no, I'm not a, I'm actually not a man. I'm a, I'm a woman. Or, OK, we'll put you down as a female rapist then. No, to hell with that. That ain't happening under my watch. I don't think it would happen under anyone's. So we look at the figures in a year's time, we go, oh, we haven't got as many men carrying out these horrendous crimes as, it, as we thought we did. Oh, no, you can't have that one, I'm afraid.